So today we're going to look at how to set up Glass in Arnold. So I'm not going to go through the render setup in detail because I've done it in other videos uh, but just to get you on the same page uh, in my environment I have this HDR map from HDR Haven uh, I have a physical camera exposure control I don't, um, I've turned off the physical camera because I'm not using it and I've set an exposure value to stop everything clamping uh, on the ground I have a plane the plane is set up with a map to material and then in the color channel we have this um, shadow map and that will just project shadows onto the HDRL background and then lastly I've got uh, a glass material which is pre-set up so which is on the standard surface shaper and uh, we're going to build that standard surface from scratch so I'm going to select a new material slot and we shall choose from Arnold surface the standard surface and then I'm going to control click just to select these three objects and we can drag a material onto this object and it will give us a dialogue to assign to selection like that. Next I'm going to switch over to the active shader now this is already set to Arnold so I'll just close that window and just show you that setup so in the render setup I've got the active shade mode set to Arnold got some low samples here and a small resolution so let's click render that will activate the active shader if you um, control left click you can zoom in or right click to zoom out so now we've got the setup we can start adjusting values so the new feature that we're going to look at is the transmission settings so let's just dial that weight of that um, parameter up to one like that and you can see that we now see straight through the material and it looks glass like and to some extent you can walk away from that if that's all you need uh, but we're going to go into that in a bit more detail now as you might have seen as I did this this transmission weight um, is like a mixer so if I dial it down to 0.5 what we're seeing is um, something like half of the base color the diffuse light and half of this transmitted light which is shining through so we're just perhaps seeing a bit of transparency on the object if I dial this up a bit more maybe to 0.9 you can see this slightly white object now to make this kind of semi-transparent material what the base color is doing it's just lighting the surface and we're getting this kind of mix effect um, but there are other ways of doing it so let's just dial that down to zero so we're dialing the base, base color away and you can see that my material goes darker so just to make that clear what's going on it's under the hood the glass is getting mixed with black and this specular color so in fact if I dial this specular weight down as well then we just get a black object. If I dial the transmission back again, and we can see the glass is being partially mixed with black. And as that's dialed up, you can see we just have now the transmitted light. But our reflected light is still zero because we've got the weight down here. Uh, and actually, we do expect to see glass reflections on the surface. So if I dial that back again, you can see that the highlights start to kick in. So that's a good setup for glass, is the base color to be zero, um, the specular color to be set to a weight of one, and the transmission to be set to a weight of one as well. And then if we want to make it semi-transparent, we've got other techniques. Because actually what we want to be able to see is sort of into the depth of the glass. So let's have a look at that. So we can adjust the transmission color 
we click on it and we get a dialog here so we can make different colored glass now I need to bear in mind what I said before about never setting anything to a pure color value uh, because it will mess things up um, because the zero values will get multiplied and they will go to zero no matter what so you won't get um, correct overexposure so always make sure to just have a little bit of color bleeding into something nothing's ever that pure uh, so we've got like a red glass here so let's make it quite pale reduce the saturation a bit so we just get this slight redness take saturation out make it gray and it's darkening the glass now what you'll notice is this band here is um, much darker than the rest of the object and we kind of don't expect that because this band is quite thin and the rest of the object is quite thick so if anything we'd expect it to be the other way around so something's not quite working correctly and that's because we haven't set this depth value and what the depth value will do is will tell Arnold um, what scale multiplier to use in calculating this sort of fogging effect of the glass now it's important to get this to work that you haven't set this to white it needs to be set to some sort of color value or gray value and once you've set that then you can go and set the depth so let's just set it now so this is a scale value if this depth is very small you should see everything go black like this and then as we increase the scale uh, the light will penetrate further into the object before it goes black so you initially you'll start to see that the object goes transparent and then as I crank up the depth value you begin to see that it goes clear until we've got a around about 70 here at this scale 70 is quite a good value for glass so we're seeing some darkening here and now you can see that we've got a much better a much more believable shading or fogging of this glass ring compared to the rest of the glass sphere so these values comparatively look more convincing so if just to remind you if I set that depth to zero it's turned off this effect is turned off and this glass ring is darker from the rest of it which is incorrect but when I set it to 70 then we get a much better result now that value will depend on your scale settings so under the hood I've set this my scale set up to um, in the system unit scale the centimeters and that's a good standard setup for VFX pipeline working with Unreal and things like that so and that's not the default so just bear that in mind if you're working with other people um, or you're setting on yourself I generally tend to set things into centimeters now so that's okay that and then this setting is just purely for your user interface like so you can think about this is the actual scale of the world and then this is just what um, devices you have on your ruler you're measuring the same measurement but it's just got different um, dividers on the ruler so you can have a ruler in inches you can have a ruler in centimeters or meters but you're still actually measuring the same world value okay then so now we've got um, some sort of color for our glass, like a gray. And we've got our depth value set up. We can just play with some of these other values to see what they do. So let's have a look at roughness. Roughness we know controls the blurriness of the surface reflections. Uh, but then in this case it's also going to control the blurriness of the internal um, light bending, the actual lensing effect. So we can have a blurry lens inside the glass if we dial this up. So you can see we've got this now, this very foggy, strange glass. Like a semi-transparent plastic or something. Let's dial that back to one. Now, I can also create that effect by using extra roughness. And what you'll see here when I do this uh, is that my highlights remain sharp but the interior light the light shining through the object that's now um, blurry so we've got two separate controls um, this will control the blurriness of the surface reflections and the internal lensing uh, but if we just use extra roughness then it will just 
control the blurriness of the internal lensing. Uh, so this means that we, we can have like a foggy glass with um, very sharp, a very sharp smooth surface around the outside. Let's just dark that back down again. And then we've got this interesting value, which is the dispersion value. Let's just dial this up and we'll see what happens. So as soon as I set it, we get this very interesting prismatic effect. And that effect does exist in real life. It's much more subtle than this, so you can have fun creating your own kind of strange materials. So in reality, if just set a much higher value like 10. You get some very subtle prismatic effects just around these edges. And they kind of go away when the um, actual renderer resolves properly. So somewhere between 10 and 70 according to the manual is a good value for glass, so it's very minimal dispersion effect, this very minimal kind of prismatic effect. Um, and it's so low, in fact, you could turn it off. It doesn't really need to bear the UV there. Uh, unless you're working on, say, something like a diamond where you do get that kind of really interesting prismatic effect, or say an actual prism where you do want to see this kind of colour dispersion. Right then, lastly, okay, lastly, uh, which I possibly should have done first, but it's kind of obvious, we've got the index of refraction. So the index of refraction will control the lensing effect of the light. Uh, if we dial it down, then we'll begin to see straight through the object. And in fact, if we set it to one, the object will disappear, we're seeing straight through it. So there, we're just seeing the the fogging effect of the glass and nothing else. As we dial it up, you'll start to see the lens effect creep in. Until we get to around 1.5, which is a good value for glass. So the actual IOR for glass does vary slightly depending on the material. Uh, different glasses have different compositions. Uh, and in fact, if you have the double glazing, we have like some other gas in between like argon, then you'll get an even more different IOR effect. Uh, but generally, like something around 1.4 to maybe 1.6 is good. 1.5 is good on ang average. Uh, you can go and look this up if you're really interested in making something to a particular specification, but judging it by eye is good. Uh, if you get really high, uh, then the lensing effect becomes very severe and begins to feel almost like a metal reflection of some sort. Dial up really high. set it back to 1.5 and that's been 50 minutes so I think we'll leave it there uh, hopefully you've got a better understanding how the glass works in Arnold just to summarize set the base weight to 0 set the specular weight to 1 set the specular color to white or nearly white set the IOR to 5 1.5 rather roughness can be whatever you like depending on the surface so if you want a kind of hazy glass, 0.5 is quite good. The transmission value, now this is important, the transmission weight should always be one for glass. And you want, if you want a semi-transparent effect, um, then it's worth looking at a combination of the transmission color and the depth. Um, just to reiterate this, if your transmission color is white, then the depth has no effect. You can see that. So in order for the depth to have an effect, you must have a slight gray value in your transmission color. It must be less than one. And then as you dial this in, you see that my depth begins to have an effect. Extra roughness will control uh, the internal blurriness. So you can have um, a blurry inside and a sharp outside, but you can't do it the other way around. You can't have a, a blurry outside and a sharp inside. It doesn't work. And finally, we have this dispersion value, which will control the sort of prismatic effect of the glass. Very small values will have a sphere effect, and then more natural values like 10 and upwards will have a very subtle effect. 
Ah, and there is one last one, one last thing, which is worth saying. Um, if you just have like a glass pane on a window and it's viewed at distance, then the lensing effect is very minimal uh, relative to the rest of the scene, and you can just turn it off and make it thin walled, and that will save you a lot of computation time. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. That motivates me to do more. If you have any comments on the video uh, or there's something you didn't understand, um, leave a comment below.